Hello everyone, welcome back to Thinkology. My name's Robin, the tall blonde one, and I'm here to talk to you about liquid cats. Now, we're not talking about liquid cats literally, but I'm sure that any of you that live on the internet like I do have seen photos and gifts of cats fitting into just about any container as if they don't have bones. Is it really just their fluff? Why do they look like they're melting? I was really curious to find out. So let's dive right in and see what's what. One article from PBS jokes around and answers that cats can, in fact, adapt to become a liquid. At the center of the definition of a liquid is an action. A material must be able to modify its form to fit within a container. The action must also have a characteristic duration. In rheology, this is called the relaxation time. Determining if something is liquid depends on whether it's observed over a time period that's shorter or longer than the relaxation time. If we take cats as our example, the fact is they can adapt their shape to their container if we give them enough time. Cats are thus liquid if we give them the time to become liquid. The article compares cats to cake batter. The speed in which they meet the shape of a container, you get the idea. Of course, this isn't real science. Cats aren't really liquid. It's just pretty funny to see them that way. Another source explains that cats have a Deborah number, named after the biblical priestess who remarked on geological time scales, such as glaciers progressively flowing down valleys. Apparently, researcher Marc Antoine Fardin applied rheology, a branch of physics that deals with the deformation and flow of materials, to calculate the Deborah number of cats. The results, as expected, were pretty confusing. I guess you could say, a cat got his tongue? <laughs> I'm just kidding around. <laughs> anyway, let's move on, meow. Fardin concluded that cats can be both liquid and solid. A cat in a small space will act as a liquid, filling up all of the space and deforming to fit it. But they can also behave like solids, as anyone who has seen a cat come into contact with water will definitely know. Believe me. Most of us have the scars. This creative research also found that if you wait long enough, anything can be a liquid. Flows are based on the time it takes for an object to relax into the shape of its container. So, given enough time, even a mountain can flow. Fardin's research questions the very nature of solids and liquids. It even won him the 2017 IG Nobel Prize. The IG Nobel Prize, of course, is satirical. It's not the actual Nobel Prize. It's kind of like the Oscars to the Razzies, even though the Razzies are significantly cooler. That's what I wanted to do today. Honestly, make people laugh and then think, as this parody award is also meant to do. Now that we've had some laughs, though, let's move on to the thinking portion, shall we? Excuse me. Although some sites joke that cats can exist in their own states of matter, loaf, cinnamon roll, liquid, jerk, there is genuine science behind this. Another source reads, Cats are super flexible in general, and a big part of that has to do with the structure of their collarbones, which are quite different from our own. Mikhail Delgadio, a postdoctoral fellow at the School of Veterinary Medicine of UC Davis, says, They're only attached by muscle, not bone, which adds to the cat's already impressive flexibility. For example, their spine. This means that if their head fits through, most likely the rest of them can too, which is why some cats can squeeze under cracked doors or windows. So my whole do they even have bones question is actually pretty valid, and the answer is yes, but no. The Cornell Center for Materials Research explains it by saying that cats' vertebrae are very flexibly connected and have elastic cushioning discs between them. The feline shoulder blade is attached to the rest of the body by only two muscles, not bone. This is what accounts for their incredible flexibility and why, with these tiny collarbones, they can squeeze through tight openings. It's also what makes them so... catletic, and why they always land on their feet, and why they can extend when you pick them up. Cats have 30 vertebrae, minus their tails, which can add anywhere from 18 to 23 to that number, According to one source, all cats have seven neck bones, 
13 backbones with ribs, 7 without ribs, and 3 fused together at the pelvis. That's 30. Cat tails have vertebrae, though, and the number varies by breed, and sometimes individual cats with longer tails have as many as 23 vertebrae. Those with shorter tails have as few as 18, creating a range of 48 to 53 vertebrae. These bones make up a fifth of the cat's 250-ish bones. Which, for those of you that paid attention in human biology, is more than a grown adult human. You'd think that with all of these bones, cats would be less flexible and break them all the time. But it's that elasticity between them that allows cats to stretch, to rotate their backs up to 180 degrees, flex their backs into a U-shape, and stick their tails straight up. I guess you could say cats are pretty fortunate, that's fortunate, to have such a great skeleton build for being a predator. Now, by this point, I was pretty curious about the evolution of cat anatomy. Even though curiosity killed the cat, I kept looking. After all, I know that with dogs, breeding has changed them over time, and how wolves became dogs is a really rough story. The genetic waters between dogs and wolves have always been incredibly muddied over time, and not all scientists agree on how this happened. Some say that it was survival of the friendliest among the wolf pups that humans captured 10,000 years ago or more, and the curly tails, floppy ears, and splotchy coats evolved over time. Dogs, in a way, domesticated themselves to survive. There's a lot more to unpack here, but I just wanted to provide you this as a comparison. You see, whereas dogs and wolves are incredibly different, genome sequencing reveals that tigers and house cats share around 95% of the same DNA. Even though there's differences in throat anatomy between the two, hence why house cats don't roar and lions don't purr, they have many shared attributes from sleep, to smell, food games, and kneading, to territory marking, you name it. So little Fluffy, or whatever your cat's name is, hopefully not Keith, isn't all that different from their wild ancestors. Their limber spine not only allows them to do great acrobatic feats, but it also contributes to their speed as runners. Cats make their living in the wild as predators, and to be successful, they must be quick, powerful, and flexible. From a sitting start, they can spring up to nine times their height, and they can narrow their shoulders and chest to squeeze through almost impossibly tight spaces. In an eye's blink, they can right themselves in midair and land on their feet, and make sudden changes in direction while pursuing and capturing prey. I guess cats didn't get the memo about survival of the friendliest. Well, I've known that for a while. Have you met my cat? Of course, that's not to say that cats aren't friendly nowadays. They're just far more similar to their dangerous predatory ancestors than you may think. Another source online compares cat, dog, and human skeletons if you're interested. That'll be in the sources down below. The point really is just that while cats have evolved to shape a Lilith agile fighting animal, humans have formed to provide strength and stability. In both cats and humans, the skeleton provides the same basic set of functions. Because of the density and hardness of bone, the skeleton builds the rigid framework to which other body systems attach. The basic shape of a body is determined by the skeleton. The skeleton also serves as protection for vital organs, such as the brain, heart, lungs, you name it. Because of the structure of the skeleton, it is the basis of all movement. Functioning as an attachment point for all muscles, the skeleton serves as a series of levers to push and pull the body into place. Far from being a dead organism, the skeleton houses a production powerhouse. The human bone marrow produces an average of 2.6 million red blood cells a second and forms the basis of the immune system. The skeleton of both cats and humans acts as a storage facility for minerals such as calcium and phosphate. All right, so we understand how cats can fit into these spaces and why they evolved to be this way, but why are they still acting this way now? Why do they do this in our houses, in cardboard boxes, and Tupperware? Surely there's no purpose for this fluffy, adorable beast melting into this bowl, right? 
According to Catster, one of the reasons is that it makes them feel warm. Just like a glove or a sweater for humans, a snug spot contains body heat, and cats like to feel cozy, so they're often hunting for that perfect fit. It provides a sense of security. Cats also seek shelter from predators, so having something to their back keeps anyone from sneaking up from behind. Cats also like to position themselves so they can see out the opening, says Marilyn Krieger, certified cat behaviorist and owner of the Cat Coach and Urban Edge Wildlife based in Redwood City, California. They feel safe and hidden from potential threats, while at the same time, they can see possible predators and other threats. Their heads are facing out, so it can be easier for them to fight if they need to. A common hiding spot for cats is underneath a bed. That space is fairly tight and low, but from there, they can see out and feel secure, Marilyn says. Other sources, such as the Mercury News, says this if I fit, I sit mentality also comes from cats wanting to protect their belly. That's their most vulnerable spot, so they try to prevent an enemy from gaining access to it by curling up into a tight ball. So this could be a sign that they're stressed and they're escaping into this snug spot to escape from things that bug them. Not to mention, a cat can tell if they're going to fit because of their whiskers. The length of the cat's whiskers is generally supposed to be the width of the cat, so poor little chubby cats may get stuck if their whiskers don't account for the extra fat. Generally speaking, though, a healthy cat can easily tell if they're going to fit into one of these containers, and it provides them a little safe, cozy spot to watch for predators and curl up. All in all, cats are an extreme outlier among domestic animals. Cats may be tamed and domesticated, but it isn't until recently that we've begun to change them. According to ARS Technica, house cats don't show signs of animal domestication such as infantilization of facial features, decreased tooth size, and docility. However, blotched tabbies don't exist in the wild, and humans have been intermittently guiding cat breeding for less than a thousand years, whereas dogs and goats have been under our control for a lot longer. Between you and me, we've always been under the control of the cats. I think we've known that for a while now, though, right? Arguably, we are at the dawn of cat domestication. Today's wild cats and house cats are still virtually the same, but in 8,000 years, we might have as many breeds of domestic cats as we do dogs. Imagine having a golden retriever-sized cat with the same sunny disposition. Tomorrow's cat lovers might be living with baby-faced tigers or ultra-fluffy purse cats who look like kittens forever. Or maybe cats will continue to defy domestication. They could carve out a place as one of the only animals to befriend humans without ever falling completely under our control. Whatever the case may be, I do hope that our feline friends continue to turn into liquids when you pick them up and fit into any container imaginable. I've always loved cats for the clover little creatures they are. With all of that being said though, that's where I'm going to end today's video. I hope you all enjoyed it. If you did, make sure to hit that like button, and if you're new here, well then make sure to get yourself subscribed and click that bell. And if you just so happen to want to see some content from me, well then make sure to check out my links in the description below. And hey, I'll see you all in the next one. Bye guys!